What's up, Trade Hackers? Welcome to today's update. Today's Monday, May 11th. Starting with the Trade Hacker question of the day. I keep getting a lot of this in the emails and, and some discussions in the community about how can this market possibly keep going higher with all the bad news that's going on? Well, first off, let's, let's go to the platform and take a look. So S&P's today down about nine, Dow down about 174, NASDAQ up 50, Russell down. So kind of a mixed bag between the indices. Taking a look at the S&P 500 first. And so obviously this is the big downdraft we saw, and this has been the rebound thus far. So the question is, how is this, you know, just massive rally continuing to happen? You can see at one point we were down 33% year to date. Now the S&P is only down 10. If you look at the NASDAQ, NASDAQ is actually positive. It's up 4% year to date. And a couple things. One, big tech is leading this market, right? I mean, they are unequivocally, absolutely leading this market. You've got companies, and, and I don't necessarily consider Zoom big tech, but you know, Zoom is up 142%. You look at Netflix, obviously Netflix still continuing to do well. Netflix is up 33% year to date. Obviously staying at home doesn't affect them much. Uh, you got things like Roku, then you got you know, what I really consider big tech, more like Amazon. Amazon's up 26% year to date. I mean, they're, they're benefiting from the corona economy, the stay at home economy that we're living in right now. If you look at Facebook, obviously Facebook still continues to do well. It's up pretty flat for the year. Now, Facebook is uh, in a little bit of a different situation. I mean, they're getting a ton of traffic, people at home, people on social media. So the amount of people that are interacting on Facebook, but they're not as up as much as you might think because they are really ad revenue driven. And a lot of companies have put a hold or reduced their ad spend on social media because, I mean, think about it. If you're a pizza shop, a local pizza shop, and you had typically advertised on Facebook, well, you're not open right now, so you're not advertising for people to come in. But still, just with the mass amount of people on social media, uh, your Facebooks of the world and your Twitters have done very well during this time. Obviously, what has not done well? Well, you look at like Boeing. I mean, you know, it hasn't had near the rebound that we've seen in, in a lot of the other things. If you look at some of the other airlines like Delta, DAL, I mean, you know, you're not seeing near the bounce in Delta like you're seeing in everything else. If you look at Wynn Casino, surprisingly has bounced even more than, than I would suspect, but, but still not quite as much as some of these big tech. So big tech is leading the way. Why else is this market holding up as well as it is? Well, think about everything that the Fed has done and everything that the government has done from a stimulus standpoint. The Fed has cut rates to zero. They have just flushed this economy with cash. You've got the PPP and the, and the different um, forgivable loan programs that are going on where there's just so much cash being pumped into the system that it's certainly helped in propping this thing up. And so that's what we're seeing. So big tech and stimulus, that is what is keeping this market alive. So the question is, how long can this last? The PPP loans uh, for payroll, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to people who, you know, when they, even when they're able to reopen, like your retail, your restaurant type situations, you know, a lot of their employees are not even going to come back to work because they're making more money on unemployment and these stimulus checks than they would if they go back to work. And so that's going to be, I can't remember exactly when that runs out or when those additional uh, stimulus dollars continue to come, but that's kind of what you need to be looking for is when that stimulus money runs out, then what will these companies, what will these small family-owned companies, as well as the large publicly traded companies, what is going to happen at that point? And I think that's going to be where the rubber really meets the road, you know, to, to figure out, you know, is this thing, is this stimulus money that they provided, was it enough to really just let these companies not skip a beat and continue on as if, as if this coronavirus never happened, or is it going to run out and these companies are going to be like, uh oh, now what do we do? So that's, that's kind of the magic question that nobody knows. But if you look at, you know, we obviously this this initial run up was really 
up until April. Really, over the last month, we've been trading pretty sideways. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens when the stimulus money does run out. But we're going to continue to stay mechanical. You know, obviously, we are, we are short throughout this. And then, and then at some point, we kind of cut away a lot of our shorts and we kind of rode this up. We were kind of neutral to long, which benefited us. And we've been adding short delta as this has been going higher. And now we've got some short delta. Uh, so we would benefit from this market going down. So that's where we're at, but we're not overly short. You know, we're, we're still going to stay mechanical. A lot of, a lot of neutral trades, some short Delta trades overall, we are definitely short. So would benefit from a downside move, but definitely not betting the farm that this, this thing is going to crash again. If, you know, if you want my thoughts, kind of what I think is going to happen, you know, I, I still think this thing's going to roll over. I still think we're going to go below the lows that we saw in March. I hate to be, I'm not an eternal pessimist. I'm a pretty optimistic guy, but overall, that is my opinion of what I see happening. So what else is going on? You know, what happened in the markets today? Looking at some of these individual stocks, you got some, again, big tech is up, AMD up big, Apple up big. The banks got hammered to the downside, you know, Bank of America down over 4%, Citi down over 4%. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Financials, if we look at just XLF, which is the ETF that tracks the financials, the financials are down big and they're down, they're still down 30% year to date, XLF is. So the financials have certainly not seen the bounce that, that tech has seen in some of the other industries. Uh, so like I said, this thing is being really held up by tech. If we see financials start to roll over, and, and obviously, especially if we see some tech start to really roll over, that's when we're going to say look out below. But for now, we're just we're continuing to trade in a pretty narrow range over the last month. And, and then if you look at some other stocks, like, I mean, look at Wayfair. Wayfair is your online office furniture, a lot of uh, even in home decor furniture type place. I mean, look at this thing. Back in March, I mean, this thing, they were very close to filing for bankruptcy. It got down to $21 a share. And now it's at... $192 a share. I mean, if you're looking for a contrarian move, something to short, you know, maybe maybe this is your play. I haven't dipped in yet, but definitely tempting the way that this thing has moved on the back of basically getting ready to file for bankruptcy just a month and a half ago. Some of the traveling company, you know, booking, uh, like I said, Delta, you know, those are continuing to see some downside pressure. So we will see what happens. So what did we do today? We added an iron duck in SPY. Look at SPY with our iron duck strategy. We have a big buffer to the downside so we can profit as long as this thing kind of doesn't go down too far. And then obviously if it continues to rip higher. We have no risks to the upside and we'll continue to make money no matter how high it goes. So I really like a lot of those plays where you have, you know, no risk in one direction, as well as some plot volatility is still high. If you look at the IV percentile on SPY, it's still at 79, you know, IV rank down at 25 level, but these options are still elevated. There is still a lot of uncertainty out there which causes the price of options to be elevated and still a good time to be selling some premium. So that's what we're going to continue to do. Hope everybody has a good evening. Talk to you tomorrow.